Welcome everyone! I tried Punishing Grey Raven. Oh boy, oh boy, another free to play anime game that is available on mobile and was recently ported to PC. Punishing Grey Raven. The title of this game gave me the same vibe I had reading Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Both title doesn't make any sense, but I like it! So, same rule as what I did with Honkai Star Rail, played for 5 hours to see if the game is worth more than that. Yes, I have this rule for every free to play game, I'll give it 5 hours of my time to see what it has to offer. I do believe that 5 hours is enough for the game to show me if it's worth my time or if I have wasted another finite resource. Surprisingly, even though this game was released for mobile, it is in my radar. My longtime friend played it for a year in his phone and still playing it to this day and according to him, the game is fun and the quality is quite good. But it's a mobile game. I won't play that. I'm not a fan of mobile games and to be honest with you, I despise mobile games. I can go into a 10 minute run why I hit that platform but I think I'll repel more people from my channel. Well, no one really watches nor visit my channel, but if in case you're not one of those 46, then TLDR in my perspective, mobile games equals to low quality games, gambling like game design, and apologetic to the point of stupid player base. There, I got derailed. Getting back to Punishing Grey Raven. I've downloaded this game on May 15th, the PC port release, since I was really looking forward to play this game and I don't own a phone to play it with. Yes, Blizzard, I don't own a phone. My friend is recommending it to me and all the game that he recommends is quite okay. Uh, sometimes. And I saw snippets of gameplay shared by the same friend. I like the flashy attacks and the characters in the game. Tobi is in it, you know, from Nier Automata. But that is just 50% of the game. How about the other 50? The microtransactions, the menu navigation, the controls, the combos, and most importantly, the daily missions. You know, the chores. How will this game present it to us? So, launching the game, it crashed four times. I restarted my PC. No, nope, still crashed. After relaunching it for the sixth time, it finally runs! Yay! I can finally play the damn game! So how's the intro of the game? Well, don't expect a cutscene filled with anime battles and epicness. Nope! You'll read the intro. This is not a Hoyo game, so I think they don't have the funds to give us a cutscene. In fact, all of the story bits of the game will be in text. Like you're playing some dating sims or a virtual novel. So if you're one of those people who don't like to read in their games looking at you Pudi, you will now enjoy reading in games. Or you should! Because the game has a decent story. The writing is weak but not bad. I cannot say if it's really the writing at fault here or the translation. I'm not sure. If you progress through the story, it eventually gets better. I won't say anything about the story. You need to read and experience it for yourself. It's worth it. Please trust me. The story in the first 5 hours of the game really took me on a trip. Even though there's no cutscene to show me what's happening, I can sort of see it. Cause the writing as I said is decent. It doesn't feel like a text dump. The writing make you feel something. And I appreciate that. And this is where the first problem of the game emerged. The pacing. This is not an open world game, so your missions are divided into chapters. Said chapters is filled with dialogues and gameplay. I don't know why is the word filled here, because the chapters are too short. Sometimes I read longer than I play. It's quite frustrating since the gameplay is good, amazing sometimes. The combos that you perform is rooted on the color-coded pings that randomly appear on your screen when you perform a basic attack. Each character has a different core combo, so even though the combos are simple, 
it creates this illusion that you're doing more than what is asked of you. The combos here are not on the level of DMC or Bayonetta or Nier, but I'm willing to overlook that since this game was developed for mobile. Even though that's the case, at least the devs tried to create a system and they didn't copy anyone else's homework. A disease that plagued the mobile gaming landscape. Yeah, I really hate mobile gaming. Sorry. I will add that even though it's a somewhat simple combo system, some of the combos of the characters are quite hard to pull. You'll need to practice them in order for you to pull them off properly. The game avoided a single button mashing we know other mobile game has, sort of, but the game is too easy in the beginning. You can spam basic attack, use some pings from time to time, and dodge occasionally. Yeah, it's a mobile game. It needs to gain more players in the beginning, so the first few chapters needs to be easy. We don't want those mobile gamers to hurt their hand while playing our game, right? I'm sorry, I'll stop now. Characters here are divided, as far as I know, into four types. Attacker, support, amplifiers, and tanks. There's another set of characters called Uniframe, but I haven't unlocked one yet, so I don't know how they differ from your Omniframe. So basically, standard mobile game stuff. Building your party is also standard. Level up your weapons, memory, characters, and skills by farming resources. You do that by running these resource missions, set how many waves you're willing to do, of course more waves, more resources, and you'll spend this resource called Serum to run any missions in this game, with the exemptions of some events and the Moe Army memory missions. As I said, standard mobile game stuff. To obtain characters and weapons, you can roll it in R&D, the gotcha. Okay, how's the characters that we're R&Ding for? How's their personalities? Well, they're likable. Their background stories are quite depressing. Most of them are. And I sometimes think that the writer of this game needs a pint and a dude or a dudette to talk with. So if you're into bleak anime stories, you might like the characters and with that flashy yet simple combat system this game has, well, what's not like? Oh, very important stuff that I may add. Anime or anime gotcha game character creators out there who are more talented than I, this is how you create an adorable yet vulnerable anime girl. You see this? This is not new. I can call this a trope, a cliche. But this is how you make a cute and likable type of characters. This is how you make them precious. Building your party or character is also easy. Not only because it's simple, but you can find recommended builds in the game. You can see how many players like the build and you can copy it. If you like to see more build recommendations, you can visit the wiki as well. The memories that you'll obtain through events and resource runs is the core of your build. These memories has stats that you need to make your construct stronger, or long story short, match the same memory to gain the additional stat. Again, standard mobile game stuff. As well are the things you can buy with your real money. The microtransactions in this game is standard as fuck as well. I didn't even bother looking how much a gem or whatever they call that currency is or if they sell skin or alternate outfits for the construct. The game also have a battle pass divided into four categories and of course as usual one here is free filled with resources. The paid here though I didn't check because I was too focused on the gameplay and the story that I forgot to check it. My bad. It's just that I like the combat and the story that much, I forgot to check its microtransactions. Sorry, not sorry. The daily missions, I can't even say if this game has one. Because the combat is so good and the dailies are not that intrusive, or maybe it's because the menu navigation and claim feature, I cannot recognize if the one I claim is a daily or an event because there's a lot of menus my brain my brain melts 
I cannot differentiate it. Help. Another annoying thing that I cannot understand why developers put in their games. I get that it make us, the players, inform about the things that we've achieved, but fucking hell. Please, put it all in one menu and put a claim all button. There's a claim all button on the battle pass menu. Why not put that on the other one? Please? Thanks. Or you know, show us the things we earned in a small window. I'm really torn if I can recommend this to people who are like me, don't really like mobile games. Because for every good thing that this game shows me, there's an equal annoying and deal breaking thing. This game suffers from what I call mobile gamism. What do I mean about that? Well, the abundance of menu navigation you need to do just to claim rewards and resources, the different kind of resources and currencies, the serum system to limit your progress in the story. To me, this is just another psychological trap set by the devs to keep us wanting more by limiting our progress. In my opinion, that's just predatory and just outright manipulative. My 5 hour rule bit me in the ass this time. I have just scratched the surface of not only the story, but the mechanics and gameplay of the game. I know that I have a lot of things to look forward to and this game has a, a lot more to offer that I cannot talk about since I haven't experienced it yet. Like what on earth are these uniframes? How they differ to your, your omniframes? Why characters has multiple frames? What the hell is the Moe army? What can I do in the dormitory? Will we find an antivirus to counter the punishing virus? All that lingering questions. That's the point of my rule. If the game made me want to play more, to learn more of its mechanics, and to be invested in the story after the initial 5 hours, then it's worth my time. So, with that being said, even though the game annoys me with its mobile gameism, which to be honest, a very massive letdown for me personally, I did not see any slap with you with microtransaction practices that PGR peers do in their games. The simple yet somehow skill-based combos that you can pull, the bleak yet interesting story this game has, and the characters that sometimes annoys me, but likable i want to see more i want to play this game in the coming days until i eventually get sick of it i really like this game and this is my new go-to mobile game this type of games gives me hope that there's a chance for mobile games to give us amazing experience and not just slot machine to prey on whales or gamblers or outright ripoffs of successful games Thank you, Kuro, for making me gain some trust to your kind, mobile game developers. I just hope you fix your PC launcher, cause it needs to crash multiple times before launching the game. Dear viewers who made this far in this video, PGR is worth my time and I hope that you'll see it the way I do. I recommend that you try this game out, it's worth it. Thank you all for watching. And listening. I hope to see you again on the next one. Goodbye.